if you clicked on this video because you wanted to hear Pastor John MacArthur's preaching um, and not me, that's fine. I understand. The link to listen to the sermon that I'm going to be reviewing in this video is in the description of this video. Okay. So you can tune me out and go click on that. Or if you'd like to review the preaching with me, uh, continue watching. I say all that because some of you complain and say, hey, Tim, stop talking. I want to hear Pastor John. Well, we all do. And we all watch John, Pastor John's uh, content. And then some of us uh, talk about it together. So that's what we're going to do here. Uh, that being said, Pastor John MacArthur addressed <laughs> the Israeli-Hamas war. One thing that we like about Pastor John is not only does he preach verse by verse, but when things in our culture and in our world, when things happen, he also addresses them from a biblical standpoint and helps us to think properly about current events. So I was um, anxious to hear what Pastor John had to say. And on October, let me get my notes all straight here. On October 15th, he addressed it. And he took the entire sermon to address uh the uh, current events in the Middle East. So that being said, let's see a little bit here from the beginning of the sermon, what he said in the opening. Normally this would be a communion Sunday as the bulletin indicates, but I asked that we postpone one Sunday so that I had a little more time because I, I wanted to speak to you in light of all that's going on in our world, and in particular, the uh, atrocities that occurred over in the land of Israel. Uh, that is on everyone's mind. We understand the horrors of it. Um, it is, for some of us, unimaginable behavior and conduct, although it is nothing new in the world. And I was really asking the Lord to direct me in a particular way, because there's so many aspects and perspectives on what is going on in Israel and in the Middle East and in the conflict and the war that has begun. But as I thought about it, I began to list the, uh, the things we could talk about and be informed by Scripture. <clears throat> so, Pastor John opening up. He knows, he knows he's going to address this topic, and he's been really praying and preparing. What is he going to say? What, is, what should be the focus? He has one hour to preach, and he wants to encourage and exhort everyone in this congregation primarily, and then by extension, you and I, those who catch his sermons online and through uh, podcasts and such. Uh, he, went down, he went down a whole list of, of things that he could talk about. Um, he could talk about the Arab-Jewish conflict. He could talk about how this began in the book of Genesis and uh, is a precursor to Armageddon. He talked. Uh, he said we could talk about and focus on not only those things, but we could focus on the uh, per, uh, perseverance of the Jew Jews and also the persecution of the Jews for rejecting Christ. And also he talked about um, Israel's preservation or Israel's punishment when they disobeyed God. These are all things that Pastor John said, we could focus on this today, but we're not gonna. He also went on to say, we could focus on Israel's uh, everlasting state, and we could focus on the wickedness of the human heart. Uh, he also said we could focus on Israel's right to retaliation, and he mentioned uh, 1 Samuel chapter 30. He talked about we could talk, uh, the government has a sword. He said we could talk about Jesus' words uh, when he said live by the sword. And he said, hey, we could talk about false religion um, and focus on that this morning. 
And uh, there was a long uh, list of things that he said he could settle on. But the one thing that he settled on, his message for you and I, uh, was none of those things, which uh, um, was interesting. And the one thing that he focused on, uh, he talked about at the uh, almost the seven-minute mark. Biblically, there's a universal issue that I, I think is most relevant to everyone. As I thought about the approach I might take, I was reminded of the fact that Jesus faced a similar massacre. And you ask the question, what did he have to say about that? Did he talk about history? Did he talk about sociology? What did he talk about? Did, did he talk about the future of Israel? Did, did he talk about anything in the past of Israel? Did he talk about human wickedness? No, he, he focused on one great reality that involves everyone. And so that's what I want to draw to your attention and let him be our teacher. It's Luke 13. Luke 13. When Pastor John went on to read from Luke 13, and it really is, oh, let me see here. Okay. There we go. Luke, Luke 13 from the Legacy Standard Bible. Here's what Pastor John read. Now, at that same time, there were some present who were reporting to him about the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mixed with their sacrifices. And Jesus answered and said to them, Do you think that these Galileans were greater sinners than all the other Galileans because they suffered these things? I tell you, no. But unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. Or do you think that those 18 on whom the tower in Siloam fell and killed them were worse offenders than all of the men who lived in Jerusalem? I tell you, no. But unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. He also read, um, the parable of the barren fig, and he preached in, uh, through verse 9 uh, until the conclusion of his sermon. And uh, it's interesting. It's so sobering the way Jesus handled it. Like Pastor John's focusing on when uh, Hamas came into Israel and uh, killed over a thousand people and... Uh, of all the things that Pastor John could bring before us, he brings before us what Jesus said when Jesus um, was asked, you know, what do you think? What do you think about this tragedy? What do you think? Um, and uh, at the 27-minute mark, Pastor John says this. Pilate's soldiers missed other people. That doesn't make them safe. The tower missed other people when it collapsed. That doesn't make them safe. You're not safe unless you've repented. The possibility of death can come a thousand ways, but the real calamity is to fail to repent. Then you perish eternally. Everybody's headed for death. The people listening to Jesus were headed for an unexpected death that would be disastrous for them. Some of them would die at the hands of the Romans some years later when the Romans destroyed Jerusalem. There were a lot of other calamities in ancient times as well. But Jesus' words are this. The lesson for everyone is be ready to die. How can you be ready? By repenting. Strong message for self-righteous Jews who thought they did not need to repent. That's the issue. They were steeped in legalism, steeped in a kind of ceremonial self-righteousness. 
They were the last people, they thought, who needed to repent. In fact, it was that kind of talk that caused them to kill Jesus. Why did they call for Jesus' death? Jesus says why in John 7, 7. They hated me because I told them their deeds were evil. They were convinced they were righteous. So, Jesus' uh, take from a tragedy, when people said, hey, you know, what do you think of this, Jesus? Is to focus on the gospel, right? And that's what Pastor John did, and that's his, his chilling warning in this situation. You know, we look at all the terrible things that are happening in, in Israel, all the terrible things that happened in Israel in that one day when Hamas came in and randomly took hostages and shot people and killed even babies. Um, we look at that and we're, I mean, I, I've talked to relatives, you know, I want a gun now. We saw people going door to door shooting, shooting people. And, you know, who knows that might happen here someday. I, so now I, I want to arm myself. I want to learn how to, how to defend myself. I want to learn how to use a gun. <clears throat> or we could be shocked at, at all the things that have happening in Islam and Palestine and um, Hamas. But Jesus says when something like this happens, remember the gospel. Like the real calamity, the real horror is not that something like that would happen to you, but that you would die without repenting. And that's the warning. And that's the message that Jesus gave. Now, the, the, uh, the passage talks about, um, you know, do you think that these people, these things happened because um, the, they were evil? And there was a misconception back then, a superstition that if something bad happened to somebody, um, it's because they, they were evil and they deserved it. And uh, Pastor John goes through um, that passage, that part of the passage, very in depth and explains, you know, good things and bad things happen to people who are righteous and people who are not righteous. Um, so he dispels that and explains that passage. And he also goes on to explain um, the parable, Jesus. the parable at the uh, end of the passage. And, and Pastor John, this is how he sum, sums up uh, the sermon. Um, at the 48-minute mark. Or, I don't know. I would like to think that if I was in the crowd that day and had not repented and heard Jesus say all of this, I, I, I would have repented as fast as possible. But only a few did. And you come to verse 34 and you hear this, Jerusalem, O oh Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stones those sent to her. How often I wanted to gather your children together, just as a hen gathers her brood under her wings, and you would not have it. They rejected him. In fact, as I said earlier, they, they, they killed him. No wonder their house is left desolate. That was their response to the urgency of the message that day. Repentance is hard. Faith in Christ is costly. But it's the only hope. Apart from that, you will be left with the same desolation that Israel has experienced and all who reject Christ will experience forever. There's grace in the final parable, isn't there? You have some time. You have opportunity. Repent while you can. That's the message the message of grace and the Lord so sad 
that they did not repent. He, he could hardly bear it. And in the 19th chapter of Luke, he looked at the city and it says, he wept. He wept. If your theology doesn't allow you to understand that Christ weeps over impenitence and unbelief, then you need to fix your theology. What is the lesson of a massacre, slaughter, a war? And I think we've just begun to see the death and carnage, whether it's in Russia and Ukraine or Israel or wherever it's going to come from. There's one great message our Lord wants us all to know. You need to repent because you might be next. And that is his chilling warning to everyone, to you and I. It's what Jesus said, and it's what Pastor John has chosen to focus on as we view what's happening, all these tragedies going on around the world. Whether it's tragedy or not, we should be focusing on the gospel, shouldn't we? We really should. Every opportunity that we have, um, we should be sharing Christ with others. I recently rekindled my <clears throat> joy of uh, listening to some of the Christian musicians that I used to listen to um, many years ago. And I, I listened to an interview with one of them. I won't mention his name. But it was an hour and a half interview with a Christian artist who's in his 70s now. So he was one of the first quote-unquote, Christian rock musicians. And just listening to him, everything that they talked about, everything that he said, you just got this overwhelming sense that he loves Jesus, that he's been forgiven much. No matter what the topic was, he turned it to Jesus. He praised Jesus. He thanked Jesus. He talked about the grace that he's been given. And that really was humbling to me. Uh, I need to be more like that in my conversations. Um, and we have opportunities. Everything that happens, every day is an opportunity to share Christ and to share what he's done for us and that joy that we have, the peace that we have with God. Even in the midst of all the world's chaos, and boy, there's a lot of chaos. There's a lot of bad things happening <clears throat> to people all around the world. And don't forget to take time to put it in perspective. Hey, if you don't repent and believe, it's going to be worse for you. So it's not too late for you to repent and believe. So the, the sermon is called Seek the Lord While He May Be Found. And it is in the description of this video. Very first link. And um, thanks for watching. I look forward to your, to your comments. Um, because I, I know a lot of you are waiting to see, what, what's Pastor John going to say about Israel and Hamas? Well, he said it. I don't know if you, you caught it or not, but it was uh, October 15th, Sunday morning. So go watch that. I look forward to your comments. Until next video, my prayer is that you would share the love of Christ with others. Let them know that you've been forgiven much. Share with them what Christ offers if they'll only believe, repent.